If you're looking to get your hands on the perfect joystick for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, the Thrustmaster TCA Side Stick Airbus Edition is worthy of your attention. Today I'm going to walk you through an unboxing of the joystick and then I'm going to provide a review having used it now for some 12 hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Here we go. This is advertised as one of those entry-level flight sticks that's supposed to be perfect for a game like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, and I reached out to Thrustmaster to see if they'd be willing to provide me with a model to bring here to the house and plug into the computer and spend a few hours flying, and they were really kind and offered to do that, so today I'm gonna go ahead and open up this model, and then we're gonna plug into the computer, fly it for a few days, and I'll provide some remarks on how I think that this stick is positioned to provide an experience with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Let's go ahead and start opening it. Just like with the T16000M version of uh, the flight stick, it looks like this side stick Airbus edition has the option to move the little thumb grip to either the left or the right side so that it'll be usable for both pilots who are left and right handed. Tons of fine print in there. Also looks like it has a built in uh, swivel or yaw axis so that you're able to translate and activate the rudder with using just the stick. Man, so at first glance, this thing just looks really, really sleek. It's got a lot of the same features as the Thrustmaster T16000M, although it's very clear just by looking at this thing that it's designed for a civil aviation. That's why it's the TCA model, the Thrustmaster Civil Aviation model. It looks really sleek. I love the colors. We've got a little slider down here. It looks like it could be used to control the thrust if you don't have the throttle portion of a HOTAS which is super handy. For buttons, you've got six buttons located on the left side of the unit. The forward buttons have a little detent and there's a little raised edge on the buttons that are closer to the rear of the unit. On the opposite side, you have an additional six buttons, again with detents towards the front end and then with that raised portion on the rear edges of the three buttons that are towards the rear of the unit. The stick itself looks really sleek. When I Actually, when you grab it, there's a really smooth texture, so that feels a lot different to me than the T16000M. And actually, as I touch it, it feels like it might just be a slight little bit bigger than the T16000M, but there's something about the ergonomics that just feel very comfortable in the hand. Towards the front, of course, this trigger isn't meant to release weapons like the T16000M you might use in a DCS World sort of simulation. Instead, you know, that might be used as a navigation waypoint. It might be used to, you know, release the autopilot or control nose wheel steering or any other number of features that you might manage to find yourself using in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it is a single stage lever there. And then there's also another lever directly a bunch above it. So that's actually super interesting for a civil aviation stick. On the top of the control stick, there's another press button right here. That would be great for like a comm switch or something of that nature. And then of course the POV hat, which feels like it is an eight way omnidirectional hat. And then on the right side, another little button that can be really comfortably reached with the thumb. Oh, I kind of expected that red button to go down further. It doesn't, but it's still super, super easy to reach with the thumb. So you've got a hat and two buttons that you can re reach with your thumb, a single stage lever on the back, a button just above that, six, make that 12 push buttons on the bottom, and then the slider. Of course, the stick itself actually rotates so you're able to get rudder control if that's something that you need as part of your setup. And all in all, it looks absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait to get it plugged in and see how it works with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. As it is a Thrustmaster entry-level stick, it does come with just a simple USB plug-in. I'm sure it'll immediately install any drivers and that sort of stuff that's needed. So let's get this thing plugged in and see how she flies. 
Since unboxing the Thrustmaster TCA Side Stick Airbus Edition, I've been using it to play Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I've put probably 10 to 12 hours of flight time into the stick, and I think I'm positioned to make a good assessment of it. Like with any new piece of hardware, the first thing I did once I got it plugged into my favorite game was make sure that it was mapped correctly to my liking. And like most of the other hardware I've plugged in with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, the game immediately recognized the controller, showed me a picture of it, showed me exactly where all the buttons that I might need to use were located on the stick. I had no issues at all mapping everything that I needed to make sure that I could control the plane in the same way that I was doing with my Thrustmaster T16000M. After that, I put the stick through its paces. I spawned in in some beautiful scenic environments up in the Colorado area, and I took the acrobatic plane out cranked up the throttle and I put this thing into some crazy situations. I yanked and banked just a few feet off the ground. I flew in and out of mountain passes and even climbed to an altitude such that my cockpit began to freeze up. And I found myself diving down into the low valleys trying to get it heated up, but at the same time enjoying the idea of IFR flight in this crazy terrain. After I was comfortable that the stick worked well as a controller, I spawned it into a couple of other environments and tested it there. I took it into the landing challenge up in France and I managed to put down a couple real smooth landings. I didn't stay there long, I just made two or three attempts, but I was definitely comfortable that the stick provided the level of precision that I needed to be able to participate in those sort of activities that are offered by Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Once I was complete with those landing challenges, I went over and I took the X-Cub out on the first portion of the Patagonia bush trip, and it felt great. I got the Cub up and I ended up flying out over the water, setting it in autopilot and enjoying the view, and then taking it out of autopilot and diverting to a nearby airfield so I could go out on my next adventure. And finally, and this one is a given, I went over to Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport and I spawned the Airbus in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I was overjoyed to look down and see the side stick in my airplane and then compare it to the side stick that sat on my desk. And they look exactly the same. It's a striking resemblance and something that any Airbus fan is going to really appreciate as you build your system out to fly the Airbus in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. No doubt the stick is fully capable of supporting all of the other airframes in the game, but it's especially fun to see the same stick on your desk as is on your computer screen in the cockpit of your digital aircraft. As for performance, I was completely satisfied. The joystick allowed me to achieve a level of precision necessary to do acrobatic stunts, buttery smooth landings in massive airliners, or just fly nice, beautiful scenic routes all over the sim. The button mapping options were thorough and plentiful, and the 12 push buttons located on the base of the side stick give you plenty of options to customize your views or toggle your landing gear or your flaps or any other number of inputs on the joystick. On top of the stick, the POV hat allows you to look around the cockpit with ease. I'm super fortunate and I use a head tracking software called Dell and Clip with OpenTrack, which is linked below in the description. So all I have to do is look around on my screen and I'm able to turn my head in the game. However, if you don't have a head tracking solution like Dell and Clip or like Track IR, that hat on the top of the joystick allows you to just really easily look around your cockpit and achieve that in a pretty seamless way. There's also two push buttons located on the top of the joystick, and I intentionally didn't map either of those because most of the aircraft that you're gonna be using in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 have the ability to monitor two different frequencies on the radio channel. And once VATSIM integration is complete with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, I want the ability to map my left communications panel to my left push button on top of the joystick and my right push button to the right communications panel in any of the aircrafts that I fly, so that I'll be able to interface directly with the VATSIM air traffic controllers while I'm playing the sim right there on my TCA side stick Airbus edition. The TCA side stick Airbus edition also features some things that the other Thrustmaster entry level sticks like the T16000M just don't have. One of the things that is new that I really appreciate is the ability to lock the yaw axis on the stick. So all you have to do is activate the locking mechanism on the joystick and it removes the ability to twist it left and right, which works great for me as I use the panel that is on my Thrustmaster TWCS HOTAS throttle system rather than the rudder control that is native to the joystick. However, if you don't have pedals or a TWCS, then you're welcome to leave that yaw axis engaged and use it to control the rudder on your airplane.
Thrustmaster boasts about this technology called HART, Hail Effect Accurate Technology, which is the magnetic sensors inside the joystick that allows it to achieve what they describe as a surgical level of precision. Now, I don't know about all of those fancy words, but what I do know is that the joystick feels very good. And in the 12 or so hours that I've been using it so far, it continues to achieve a perfect zero after each use without me having to put any dead zone as the stick sits idly in the center. Indeed, the only drawback that I encountered with the Thrustmaster TCA side stick Airbus edition is that it doesn't have the same trigger systems or push buttons available on the top of the joystick as does say the Warthog or the Thrustmaster T16000M. But that's for good reason. The TCA is the civil aviation version of a Thrustmaster joystick. And for that reason, it doesn't need the ability to control all of those advanced systems like you might need to employ weapons in a game like DCS World. Instead, the TCA side stick is the perfect entry level joystick for anyone who is diving into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as their primary flight sim experience. And it is for these reasons that I highly recommend the Thrustmaster TCA side stick Airbus edition to any Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 pilot. A link to the TCA side stick Airbus edition can be found below. I'm Controlled Pairs, I play the most immersive PC games in the world, and I'll see you in the next one.